Good afternoon and welcome to Coping with COVID, updates about the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Good afternoon, I'm Trey Taylor. And today is a big day in South Carolina as far as the coronavirus is concerned. The governor has uh, lifted the restrictions on indoor dining. So that not only means you can dine indoors, but there are some sanitation and spacing requirements in place. Also, everyone has to be masked. Also, today is the day that he says he's going to make a decision or not make a decision. He says he's going to make an announcement, which is different than making a decision about the beauty industry. And that's been a big point of contention, not only for those of us who need a beauty salon, <laughs> but those, those folks that are in the beauty industry. And today we've got an amazing panel of beauty industry professionals. First of all, we have got John T. Elliott. He's right here to your bottom left. He has uh, been in the beauty industry for 33 years. He has a uh, salon, John T. Elliott, PhD. When I first moved to Columbia, I thought, why, why would I not think that meant a PhD, the degree, but it's professional hair designer. <laughs> One of the best haircuts I ever got. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we want to talk about that. <laughs> I know it was it was great. It was great. But you know, I'm, I was that I was that uh, client. I didn't like anything. Yeah, but, was, yeah, but, I got yeah, so yeah. <laughs> but I got so many great compliments. But uh, John's been in the business 33 years. He has uh, eight chairs, three stylists, and a massage therapist. And he is a fall four time winner of the Steve Harvey Neighborhood Awards. That's John T. Elliott. Chris Javis uh, joins us also. He is actually on the board of uh, Barber Examiners, Beauty Examiners. He has been in the business 25 years and 11 years as an owner. He has 12 booths, 10 stylists, eight barbers, and uh, three stylists. That's uh, Chris Javis with King and Queens. You see he's got his logo in the background. Thank you, Chris, for joining us. Hello. He's so prepared. <laughs> Yvonne Gaines with the beautiful low cut blonde hair and joins us from Columbia, South Carolina. Also, she's been in the business 38 years. She has uh, four employees. One is a high school educator, also a nail tech, and she's also a leading tech for uh, a national hair care company. That's Miss Yvonne Gaines. Uh, Barbara Brant Williams is in Charleston and she is a holistic hair stylist. She is one of those people in Charleston has, who's actually received some federal money for uh, not being at the salon, but she's started selling color kits as a, a, a alternate source of income. So we're so glad to uh, have Barbara Brant Williams in the in the show with us. Sandra Wooded, last but certainly not least, has been a really outspoken um, advocate for this beauty issue. Uh, she and I spent several hours on the phone last week <laughs> talking about her concerns. She's been in the business for 25 years, since 1990. She's had her salon since 1990. Five sharper image in Columbia, South Carolina. She has a, a five stylists and seven chairs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Coping with COVID. Bud Carrillo is watching. Hey, Bud, thank you so much for uh, joining us. So today, uh, the governor is going to make an announcement. And of course, we're, uh, many people are hoping, at least probably clients are hoping that that announcement is that he is going to reopen the salons. I want to find out from each of you how you feel about the salon opening. Are you ready? And do you want the salons to open? We can start with you, Chris. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm very ready. I started preparing probably about a month before the actual shutdown. Everything that uh, we, the governor had us do, we were already doing it a month in advance. Uh, I'm steady making changes to the shop as we go. Um, I'm actually here today make some, making some changes. I got to order some signage and uh, things of that nature. But, yeah, we are ready to go. I've sat down with my team at least uh, four times since the shutdown, and um, we've uh, walked through our process as we will be doing it, as well as put together a schedule for working because we will only be working the barbers only four hours a day each because I have such a large staff. I got eight people here, so we can't have all eight of us and eight clients in here at the same time. So we're only going to be able to work four people and uh, four hours a day, which is substantial. Um, being that you're making no money now, you'll be able to make some money. Right. And um, But my stylists, I'm allowing them to work six to eight hours 
but they can only have a client apiece because it's only three of them and they have enough spacing in their area to be um, comfortable with the social distancing. Sandra, you've been, as I said in the intro, an outspoken um, spokesperson for the situation. Chris says that they're going to make some changes. What type of changes have you started implementing in your salon to, uh, in preparation of whatever the governor makes the decision about? Okay. Well, like Chris, I did um, start about a month ago uh, distancing the equipment, uh, making sure that we had spacing between each of the styling stations. I too met with my staff to um, go over what would probably be expected and to get them to be on board with the necessary changes. I also implemented signage to help with the clients. I've been in constant communication with my clients via email and um, verbal communication just to give them updates and for them to have an anticipation because it's going to be a change for the, the client as well in their mm -hmm. experience. You know, they're mm -hmm. very used to that community feeling and that's going to change with the social distancing. Yeah. And that's a thing. In a salon, it's almost like a family. Everybody's mm -hmm. in here together. We laugh and talking and joking. And um, yeah. so Yvonne, are you ready to open? Um, yes. Strap wise, I am. I have the same way as Sonia's done. I've spaced things out separately. Um, luckily, I have a couple extra stations, so I have had to alternate the girls. So we all will be six feet from each other. Same way marking off every other dryer so that we had that space with our dryers, same with the shampoo bowls, um, starting to stack the gloves, start to stack the face mask, start to stack our shields, everything in anticipation of what they're going to do when we actually open up. Mm -hmm. Now, Barbara, I'm going to skip you and go to John because I want to ask you about something in particular. So, John, uh, with your uh, and you've got a massage therapist in there. And mm -hmm. in addition to stylists, how uh, what type of modifications are you planning to make? Well, she's pretty much part time and she only works one day um, during the week, which is a Saturday. So um, I'm going to wait and see what has to be done with that. I, there's no way she can practice <laughs> being six feet away from her client, plus right. being in a confined room. So she pretty much is looking at just kind of staying out of the game until things kind of get better. But like everyone else, we uh, started way ahead of time with uh, space and everything. I have enough space so that everyone will be able to be accommodated. But the thing we'll do is I've stayed in touch with the staff each week, spoken to all the clients, and uh, we're going to have a meeting uh, later this evening, or if not by tomorrow, to decide how we will go about booking. Because um, if you have a large clientele, it's uh, practically going to be impossible for you to see all of those clients the way that you used to see them, mm -hmm. as well as I've, I've ordered the thermometer so that we can take the temperatures on the forehead before they come in. Mm -hmm. The girls are very serious about that. We've got gloves. We've got, I've been using this time to kind of stockpile uh, mm -hmm. things like sanitizer, gloves and all of that. So, um, and like you said, it's, it's going to be a, a change. It's going to be a welcome change. Um, I, I'm excited about opening. I did enjoy uh, the break. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but I, I did enjoy the break the first couple of weeks, but um just trying to stay calm, keep everybody else calm. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how people interact because you really can't even cough around anyone right now right. You know, right. without them, without right. somebody going into a state of panic. Yeah. So um, we're, we're looking forward to working with our clients and letting them know the things that we've done and what we will expect for them coming in and, and moving forward. Yeah. Uh, everyone's talked about how they have stayed in constant contact with their clientele. And I think that's awesome. Now, Barbara, I know over in Charleston, you've not only uh, stayed in contact with your clientele, you have uh, put together a color kit for mm -hmm. some of them to try out. That was very bold. <laughs> well, it's a, it's kind of a combination. I gave them an option of being able to wait um, or to use a color kit with my tutorial. So I would sell them the color kit and give them the color they need of their formula. They're a brush and a bowl and a plastic cap and processing gloves and everything. And then we would arrange a time to go on uh, FaceTime or, you know, whatever by phone or by text. And I would teach them how to do it. And a lot of them, um, a lot of people were, you know, on all the different social media platforms. 
was talking about how that was right, wrong, indifferent, you know, all kinds of opinions. Right. And I just said, you know, um, I'm going to let my clients choose. I don't mind doing it because these people are not going to keep continue doing that. I am not afraid. <laughs> I am not afraid. Right. You're not afraid that they're going to start doing their own hair, right? Absolutely not. Because this is messy. If they don't understand it, they knew they do now because it takes a long time and it's messy. So it's much easier. And if they want to do it, so be it. I'm not, you know, that's the way it is. I got plenty of clients. I'm good. <laughs> so, you know, if you really need to do that, that's okay. But my point is that I didn't want them going out and buying box color at the Walmart. Exactly. I didn't mm -hmm. want them buying all this stuff and everything. And I've got their formula and I know exactly what it is. And I could teach them what to do. And it's always, a, it's just a matter of application. Mm -hmm. a matter of you know everything so they're fine and every uh, the people mm -hmm. that i sold it to were okay with it and they did it um and to be able to do that uh, that as a uh, an operation plus i have a couple of clients who are are uh, immune compromised to begin with so i went to their oh. house and i did them and i did them there anyway because that was that's okay but i was very selective as well as them being very selective Right, I right. don't want to get it any way that they do. So I'm not doing that for, you know, for everybody. Did anybody. you wear a mask, Barbara? Oh, yes, absolutely. You did. Yes, ma'am. And did you mask, require them Barbara. to wear one? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of it we did outside because it was nice weather. We've had a great spring and they have, it was a beautiful days to be able to do that. So we went outside and did it. And so it was fine. You know, so it was not, we were trying to be very safe for their reasons as well as mine. You know, so yeah, that, that worked out fine. I didn't do I didn't do many because I was just you know sorry. Right. <laughs> so, but um, but to do that, um, to not have that offer and that ability, and I know what that makes you feel like because you know if you sick regularly, if you uh, just get a cold, and how miserable you feel when you look in the mirror, uh, and you haven't <laughs> washed your hair in three days. I mean, can you imagine two inches of roots? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to give you the option. If you want to fix, that's fine. We can fix. Well, Barbara, you know, obviously you have a different clientele than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and so, so yeah, you're talking about two weeks or whatever of roots. You, oh. We talk about two months of new growth when you got oh. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of headbands, honey. Headbands. No, it's not headbands. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. So, so, but that was that was good. That was really good, Barbara. Did anyone right. else uh, kind of communicate or sell any other products mm -hmm. to your clients? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I did. Um, yeah. I did home care kits. I um, actually customized them for each client. Where I got the three ounce containers and put the, the shampoo, the pre shampoo conditioner that I use for them personally. Their foam. I right. gave them head wraps. Mm -hmm. And I've been drilling. I've been talking to them how to do it. So a lot of them have really been coping. They they just want to get in the salon. They they need some relaxing mm -hmm. color. And that's one thing I did not let them do. But because <laughs> <laughs> um I, I need not to have to do total compressive color right. for the next right. few months. <laughs> Right, because your c concern is what Yvonne, what which is what I think Barbara's gonna have to do a bunch of color correction. <laughs> yeah, you know? a lot of color correction. Okay. Um, myself, they teased me because I, I just took I cut all mine off. I was like, okay, and they're like, we have no hair. Yeah, and even with me being able to do it myself, I still just yeah. But uh, <laughs> a lot of other ones have really you know they're like, when do we go back? I, I get I've gotten about twelve texts this morning. Really? Any news? <laughs> any news? Any, and this is like a daily thing for me. Oh, constantly. Yeah, if you hear anything yet, I'm like, I'm, I'm probably going to hear what you hear because I just don't know. Yeah, and we're going to get to that issue because that, that I know has got to be unnerving. And I can't believe that you guys don't know what's going on. Uh, John, what, what have you done with your clients? You said you've also been like Yvonne and Barbara and kind of uh, co communicated with your clients with other products. Yeah, well, in the event that they, if they would have, <laughs> whoever sees this, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a, a, a thing about consultation. Yeah. So I did not, of course, none of us expected this to happen. Right. So for my clients that I do not see weekly or biweekly, I've always put together a shampoo, conditioner, a maintenance home kit. Oh. This is a must for you to buy in the event that something <laughs> happens to me. Or something goes right. wrong. Right. Nobody wants to buy it. We think I'm gonna be here 24/7. <laughs> Look what happens. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what happened was, you know, I had a couple of clients that I had to meet up here to the salon that called, um, and I put some things together for them. For the most part, my clients have been very understanding. Um, 
like like I said, I think the biggest thing is they all know moving forward. Everyone has stated to me that kit that you tried to get me to buy before this, right. I will buy it when I come right. back in. Right, right. <laughs> because right. we still don't we still don't know the long term effects later in the in the rest no. of the year. Yeah, no. yeah. So not, it, not, it's going to be great for you to have it. Yeah, not only that, John, you, you're right. You don't know the long-term effect. Of course, we're uh, just many um, epidemiologists are saying that we're going to get another wave. But then the other thing is, like each of you have said, your appointments are going to be spaced out so much differently. Oh, yeah. You know, that oh, client yeah. that you saw every week, you may or may not be able to see that client every yeah. week. Yeah, and some of, them, some of them really, I mean, depending on your clientele, depending on how all of us book, it's really going to be very taxing on us. Yeah. Very taxing <laughs> because I, I don't work on Mondays. Now right. I'm probably going to have to work on Mondays and I'm going to have to give up some lunch breaks yeah. and eat in the salon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to be tired and hungry, John. <laughs> yeah. 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 So and I already start early in the morning, so I don't want to work late at night, but right. you know, I got to do what I got to do to please my clients. At least at first to catch everybody right. up. You know, because we've right. got almost two months of folks that have not gotten their hair done. Yes, Tay Moreland says Yvonne Gaines, that kid saved her whole life. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sharon Rapley says, um, Sharon Rapley says that uh, talking about you, Barbara, you when you were saying that um, I'm going, I need to go back to her comment. She said uh, something about, oh, washing her hair every three days. She said, you know, we, we as in us with some oh. little bit of our melanin popping, uh, don't wash our hair every three days. Girl, we don't wash our hair every three days. <laughs> I have, I have <laughs> several ethnic clients and I do understand. Okay. I just don't do All right. Them, so it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sharon right. Rapley so also doing. said, that uh, she she's uh, her nephew is a single parent and he's a barber and he needs to get back I to work. He does. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that. The money situation. I'm gonna go back to you, Barbara, because you said uh, that you got some of that grant. You were able to receive some of that grant money. Well, here's what happened. My bookkeeper is the best person in the entire planet, on my opinion, right now. I didn't think so before. I didn't know better, but she <laughs> came through. She sent me all of the information I needed. I didn't have to figure out anything. All I did was go on to where she told me to go on, put in the figures she told me to put in, and I did it like at the end of March. Mm. And then I started with, with that. And so I got the EDIL process going and I left it alone. And then, of course, then they emailed you and said it was supposed to be ten thousand dollars, and then they took it down to thousand dollars. You know, because wow. it was because they were trying to take all those funds and spread them out a whole lot further for everybody. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs some money, okay? Right. And so, um, so I got that. Then I, same thing. She told me everything I had to do for the PPP program, and because I'm an independent contractor, but I'm my own employee, um, in my business, then I was able to apply for that. And so I just got approved for that uh, on Friday. I think I got the uh, the last email. I think my banker's been working way overtime, so I actually got an email Saturday night. And mm -hmm. so I got that approval, but that hadn't shown up yet. And then unemployment, I just was like, "You have got to be kidding me!" I was on. I was tenacious and holding on the phone, wrote to them in person, did everything I needed to do. And so I got my unemployment, but I've heard of many people who have not gotten any of this stuff yet. And yeah. it's just, it's free. Yeah. I don't know what, I mean, it, it, you know, like I'm a big follower of Susie Ormond, who's a financial advisor. Yes. Yeah. Been now there. And she said, you know, you're supposed to have eight months of an emergency fund. You tell me what hairdresser has eight months of an emergency fund. Please. Well, you, you know, know get, good for you. Uh -oh. I'm <laughs> Right His That's wife is an accountant, though. His wife right. is an accountant. There you go. That's wise. And that, yeah. that, believe me, that's the kind of stuff this will teach you. Is, yeah. You know, don't don't ignore that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You need to learn how to do that because that that will kill you. You know, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Kimberly Hicks says, hello. Thank you, uh, Kimberly, for joining us. Sharon Rapley says she wears wigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Sharon, I wear head wraps. So listen, John, <laughs> John. Yeah. You said that you also applied, but you had a lot of challenges for with the uh, oh the oh yeah. I mean, but the thing is, you can't allow it to frustrate you because a lot of mm -hmm. people didn't know that they could apply through other small branches right. with right. banks. You know, a right. lot of people just think, oh, my bank denied me, but no, you could you can try other banks. You know, but here again, all of this, it's it's very interesting that this has happened, and I would like to say to any of us that are in this industry or anyone who's self-employed. This is a very big eye opener 
if you're in business for yourself. Yes, because my accountant, I, I would be like Barbara. I think my accountant, like she's been with me all 30 years of my career. Mm -hmm. And when things came through that were like stumble, I was stumbling over and having to get frustrated with, she was like, hey, email me that stuff. She mm -hmm. took care of it for mm -hmm. me. Bam. Mm -hmm. Bam. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, and uh, along with that, I did prepare and I'm not as good as Chris. Uh, one day <laughs> trying to get that up. But I had an emergency savings yeah. set aside. Uh -huh. So, you know, people are like, why are you not, you're not acting crazy? You're not stressing out. Hey, it's in God's hands. And yeah. when this money that I put aside is done, preferably this will be over with by that time. Right. Right. So right. You've, you've got to be concerned as a business owner to mm -hmm. not just spend, spend, spend. Mm -hmm. Right. So building your capital is important. Right, right. This is these are things we have to look out for. Now, my renters, to give you a, another side of that, the first thing that came to my mother, we we're not working, we can't pay our rent. <laughs> but guess what? Every time, every time it's time to renew a contract, I always state to my independent contractors, put aside at least a month to two months worth of your boot rent, mm -hmm. right? In case you hurt your hand, you break right. your leg. Yeah. Right. But here again, and look right. what happened. We weren't even expecting this. Right. No. But no. but you know, I, I I'm going to work with people because people are going to work with me. Right. So right. at the end of the day, you, you got to do what you got to do to save your business. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's been good that you know the country has uh, kind of given grace to everyone because everybody's yes. in yes. the same situation. You know. Right. Right. Bank giving grace to people who have rent and, and mortgage and things like right. that. So, mm -hmm. You know, the utility companies are giving grace to people because everybody's in the same situation. Everybody. everybody. Yeah. Chris, also, go I ahead, Barbara. That, I think people need to know, too, that you, when it comes down to it, it's your responsibility. So mm -hmm. you have yeah. to right. follow up and you got to call the bank and you got to right. call the mortgage company. That's right. You got to call your creditors and you yes. got to be responsible. And I did yeah. all that. And so my, my mortgage company gave me a three month forbearance. And then yeah. they said they'd give me six months if I needed it. You know, right, and you right. don't know that's the problem. We think we're going to go back and everything's going to be fine. It's not. I right. think that it's, it's, right. I want to go back to work, but I, we're doing all the things that we need to that's do to right. prepare. But it is, this thing is going to go further. And until they find treatment or whatever for these people who are immune compromised, we're, we can't expect to not take care of ourselves and our employees and them. That's right. It's just very right. challenged. So, right. you know, you don't know whether they're going to close down again. Because yeah. they might if, if these numbers That's go right. back up. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Valicia Adams says, bless you, John. She also was uh, giving her wig uh -huh. check. And uh, Henrietta Henrietta uh, Renee Young says, she wears Shirley Temples. I need them back. I don't even know what a Shirley <laughs> Temple is. <laughs> is that like the Shirley Temple curls? Yeah. 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 Is that one of y'all clients? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But we will do them. You're right. Right. Yes, we <laughs> Whatever she <Well>, needs. <laughs> So, At this point. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so listen, I, I know a lot of the problems has also been the lack of communication that you guys feel as oh, hair God. care professionals no. you have mm -hmm. not gotten. Sanja. Oh, or anybody. <laughs> I was going to go to Sanja because I know she's right. been very vocal about it, that, that you, you guys don't know what's going on. No, we don't. And the thing about it is, is that... Um, you know, for as long as it goes on, I get more and more information. And so I was reading someone's um, thread and they were talking about the dentist. And, you know, of course, you mainly think about yourself and how things affect you. But, you know, there's other industries that are being affected as well. My thing is, is that when it comes to people who have to work with people and they're licensed to work with people, there should always be a protocol for helping them to negotiate something like this. You know, um, right. the medical industry immediately got, you know, information and what was needed during this time that we've been down, you know, a lot of us were proactive to start doing things, you right. know, ahead, ahead of being told, but we're salon mm -hmm. owners. So that's right. in leadership. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. But for those people that are just um, that don't have that leadership, 
during this time that we've been down, we could have been working on what it is. What preparation do you want us to work on so that exactly. we're ready to go? Because quite honestly, had we been working on that preparation, just like the restaurants, we could have opened probably sooner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and that's just my take mm -hmm. on it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So who, who was who should you have gotten some uh, notification from? Because, Chris, I know you're on the well, board. Right, so right. Was, was the board not involved in any of those negotiations? Well, what the board has been involved in is with the, the students and ensuring that they're able to complete their education. Those who are licensed, if their license lapsed, and during this period in time, they're going to be able to extend those licenses. Um, um, so far as inspections, if an inspection came up and, and you know, things are not all right with your licenses, um, giving people time, you know, 30 to 90 days to get all that corrected. Um, if you do fail an inspection, it won't be held against you. That will be extended out and things of that nature. Because in this period in time, we really don't know what to do. Um, right. if, you, if for me, I, I've been in manufacturing also, so I've been a part of a safety team and I understand a lot of things that need to be done. So understanding reading the CDC report twice a day, you need to read it two to three times a day because at eight o'clock it's going to change at Absolutely. 12 o'clock and at right. 12 o'clock it's going to change by three o'clock. So mm -hmm. understand this, the suggestions that they make, they're not telling you what to do. They're only going to be suggesting to you what you need to do. Take those suggestions and implement them. Mm -hmm. Don't sit back. It's going to cost you some money. It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you some work and a little labor. But go ahead and implement those things because if you implement them and you're able to prevent anyone from getting sick in your business, that's the longer your business is going to be able to stay open. With the large staff that I have, I have to be proactive. Because if one person in here gets sick or somebody who has come here gets sick, we'll shut down. Right. Because, you know, according to the CDC, we've already been doing appointments before we started. So now I'm forcing everybody to keep a record of those appointments. You can't just write them down and throw them away anymore because now mm -hmm. if somebody gets sick outside of here, we have to know if that person was here. Right. Um, mm -hmm. you, gotta, you know, everything is extremely important. It's extremely important. Yeah. So, you know, but so far as the information is concerned, um, so far as labor license and regulations, it is our job to actually reach out to labor license and regulations. They're not going to reach out to us unless no different than what they did. They're going to send the information out and let us know where we can go to retain information. Mm -hmm. Because That's been hard. unfortunately, most of them are at home, too. Yeah, it's been hard with contacting them. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's even been hard to contact hard. them. You know, calling yeah. them, asking right. them. You know, it, it's something right. else in place. We don't it, know it, yet. Just stay with yeah. your OSHA. You know, they keep telling yeah. referring back to what we already do. You know, right. those who are professional right. already cover those bounds. But you know, to give us more information, like you said, to prep. Every time I see something down, okay, let me get this done. So I've been starting to build stuff that I know we need. Mm -hmm. But it's just mm -hmm. like there's no real communication because we're the ones, especially as salon owners that have to set everything up in place and feel comfortable enough to bring mm -hmm. our workers in there because ultimately right. we're responsible for everybody that walks through those doors. Right. Yeah. As far as implementing it and any, any fines that come down from somebody that refuses to wear a mask or I'm hot under the dryer, you know, we're playing all the scenarios. You know, I have yeah. several yeah. You know, colleagues that are already open in Georgia and a lot of them haven't opened up because they're still trying to get the best quality of doing a whole style. How do we keep a mask on? How right. do we do this on a job? How do we implement yeah. this on them? Yeah. Those that should be more contact with those who are truly in this profession, so we kind of can know more so the trickle down, and we get information mm -hmm. out. You know, being, mm -hmm. you know, our shows have been canceled, different ones that you know. I was, I'm a platform artist, so a lot of stuff we know in industry that we mm -hmm. have to be able to get out, and, and a lot of us can get it out to masses if we know a little bit more, so we can prep and help everybody else out. Right. That's yeah. Yvonne Gaines, and we're talking to five hair salon, salon owners in uh, South Carolina about uh, their frustration about, one, we were just talking about not being communicated with. Well, we're just talking about the beauty industry in general, as today is the day, the governor says, the governor of South Carolina right. says right. he's going to make an announcement, not a decision, but an announcement. <laughs> My name is Trey Taylor. We're talking to Yvonne Gaines, Barbara Brant Williams in Charleston, John 
John T. Elliott, also Chris Javis and Sandra Wooden with Sharper Image. Arlene Wilson is uh, watching. She says she's going to go buy herself a drawstring ponytail. So I don't know where she's going. <laughs> oh, she must have to open. Oh, the beauty so that's right. Blue beauty yeah. supplies open, which is right. another interesting thing. Deborah uh, White says she's going to join her. Linda Zola uh, uh, Smith <laughs> says uh, she needs her twist, Yvonne. Want to thank all of them for watching. And uh, Tasha Nicole says that she's appalled that she she's in ha a hairstylist that we can't open with limited restrictions on clients. Also, want to say that uh, Arlene Wilson says that she was recently diagnosed with alopecia now this she said jesus be a fence around her head he will be, <laughs> he, will be. he will be uh, uh tasha nicole also says as an educator she says she's being told that we will have to begin teaching sanitation at the complete class now is that correct chris because it sounds like what you yes, were saying. Right. right well we we already understand sanitation oh, yeah. Yeah. See, the thing is, the thing is, a lot of us sometimes we want LLR to give us the information, but you all have to also remember that LLR, they don't do what we do. That's they right. just understand the regulations of what we do. Mm -hmm. So I, for the most part, like me, I did an interactive video with my team showing how we were going to actually do our best to operate uh, or operate better than we have before. Right. And I took that information and I sent it in to the governor. And he oh, actually did it. Right. Because the only way that we're going to actually get some results of what we should be doing is to think deeper into what we do and how to protect ourselves even more and document that and give it to those who don't understand what we do, but right. regulate what we do. Right. But Sonia, right. before you jump in, I want to ask Chris. So did you get a response from the governor's office? Um, from, uh, from a friend of mine who works in the office, he said they did review it and it was good information. Glad you shared it mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, most of the people that sit at that round table, they understand the disease. <laughs> they understand the medical portion, but they don't understand drapes. They don't understand cakes. They don't understand cones. They don't understand sanitation. Right. You know, they go get a haircut. They know how the barber or a stylist treats them whenever they go in the salon. They don't actually know what we're doing beforehand, during, or after. Right. And that's where we have to step in. Yeah. And, yeah. and also, I wanted to say, too, that we are communicating that with all of our clients is yes. what we're doing as well. Because yeah. I had two clients call me and say, are you going to use a different cape on me with everybody else? I said, absolutely. Right. I mean, we, that's something we did anyway. Yeah. But you didn't right. know that because you didn't need to pay attention to that. I didn't mm -hmm. pay attention to that. And then also, I use a medical grade disinfectant that's stronger than barbicide for my combs. But I also took the barbicide exam because they have that online mm -hmm. where you can take that whole certification exam that's and right. then hang that up in your booth or wherever you are so you, that people have a little bit more sense of comfort about that's, that, that you that's know key. your stuff. And that's the key is understanding yeah. that no matter what we do, there's nobody going to police us but us. Right. We well, are I, the ones. I want to bring Sonia in because, I, Sonia, I know when you and I spoke last week, you said that when uh, several years ago, when AIDS first came on the scene, that mm -hmm. the beauty industry really kind of stepped up their game as far as sanitation. So you guys were already doing a lot of this already. Oh, yeah. When I entered the industry in 1990, of course, AIDS was still very much a thing. And we had to learn how to cut hair um, in accordance with the approach that um, potentially every client that you dealt with was a potential um, threat for you or vice versa. So you had to, to cut with that in mind that um, this was very serious and that if there was a blood spill, you had to act accordingly. And right. so with that being said, I want to go back just a little bit to what Chris was saying. And I concur with what he's saying, that it is our responsibility. And it's, it's very obvious that they don't know what exactly goes into um, us getting a license, that the fact that the very second chapter to our theory book has to do everything with sanitation right. and um, infectious disease control and mm -hmm. all of those matters. And when I mentioned that LLR has not communicated with us, I'm not speaking on the standpoint of they need to tell us what to do, but talking to us as it relates to how this is affecting our 
our industry as well as what we can look forward to because the laws have already been stated this is what is required for you to even get your license so you know a lot of people think that our license is based on you've been taught how to do hair now right that's not the case no. you are being taught how to <laughs> properly protect the public everybody's mm -hmm. been to a hairdresser that has a license but doesn't necessarily know how to do hair but right. what they're learning is how to work with the general public in a safe manner and so right. what i'm saying is is that llr like there's but when you watch those um round table discussions there's representation for the restaurant industry there's representation for you know even the golf industry and I'm saying because we do affect the community, there needs to be some form of representation for us at those tables. And that, right. yeah. 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 Well, and you I'm know, I'll, 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 say, I'll but say I do this. feel passionate about it. Yeah. Right. I'll, well, I'll well, say this. Where, I, I don't mean to cut you off, John. And one where, way for all of us to get that representation is we've got to start spending more time with our legislation. You know, we, we don't go down to the state house like we should. You know, we don't, you know, we had a holiday produced this year for barbers. And whenever it came out on the floor, none of us was there. Well, that's <laughs> that's the problem. And, and here yeah. lies the problem. If, if you want to be involved, you need to show up to these meetings. Yeah. Now, right. I, I do see you. I do see you classes, which mm -hmm. now and my whole dynamic of how I'm going to. John, what's the, the, the hours that are. The, those are the hours that are required for us as stylists okay. to maintain and keep our license. Right. Now, a lot of changes have, I've got to go and completely redo my whole format for the rest of the year because of what's happened. I've got to do online because of what's going on. But to get back to this, I've always had an issue with the board, not from a standpoint of how sometimes they do things, but because I've always been an advocate for stylists to show up at these board meetings. Right. And we don't right. come to the meetings. It's just like you can't put somebody in office and complain about them if you didn't go out and vote. You right. got to get there. You got to so get there. The meetings the, it's listed on the website when the meetings are. But but stylists don't want to take time out one day out of the month out of their schedule to go and hear the things that are being voted on or passed on. Right. And it's key what right. Chris said earlier. Uh, know your who's your legislator. Right. These are the things that we need to do for ourselves because we can't expect the board to do everything. They're going right. to sit up there and do whatever. You got your barbering board, you got your cosmetology board, and even those two boards, they don't match eye to eye. Hmm. They don't see that eye to true. eye all the time. That is true. And, and yeah. here lies, for me, this is, I find, to be one of the biggest problems in the beauty industry. You've got a barbering board and a cosmetology board that yeah. can't come together on certain yeah. things because one board wants to control everything. Mm. Right. right. Yeah. These so are the things sounds, we need to work on. Right. One well, board wants to control everything and the other one is controlled. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it does sound like, guys, it sounds like there are, this is an excellent opportunity. And I was going to make this right. point, but you're yeah. making it now. This is an excellent opportunity for the industry to it's now. Time. Come to, to, yeah. to come together and change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is kind of thrust you into. Okay, we gotta we gotta do it or die here. Right. And, you know, yeah. literally, you That's have right. to do it That's or right. your business will die. So, well, the, go ahead, John. The things you have to look at. Each state has different regs. Right. So, like, mm -hmm. what works for South Carolina? Like, I have stylists that come from New York and up north all the time. It's like, oh God, I gotta go through all this to keep my license. We don't have to just get our license just one time. We don't have to take any more continuing education class. Right. I, on the other hand, I'm an advocate for continuing education. Right. Because we've got so many salons out here where you have stylists that have gotten their license umpteen years ago, <laughs> and they are still doing the it's same really damage to clients <laughs> and people's hair right. Right. because they yeah. haven't furthered their education. But you've got some that say, Hey, you know, I don't feel it's necessary. I can go to a class and learn that if I want to. So you've got to look at what your state mandates. Right. And, and a, a I can't hold all continue. the states throughout. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. So you got to continue. I don't mean to cut you off, but you have you got to continue watching things because even with the right. barbering board, a lot of things are going to change. 
That's Nobody right. Sure. They're going. To I've been panic. hearing about some and things, I, and I hope people are prepared. And I do hope some are not prepared because they don't need to be in the industry. Right. But um, right, mm -hmm. just right. just like you were saying with the other states, you got people like myself. Whenever I go on family vacation now, I go whenever that state is having a board meeting because I want to go in and sit and, and see listen. what's going on. The only way that we can change here in our state is to get involved with other states to actually see what the, what's going on. You can't stay trapped in your industry. You can't That's stay trapped. Right. You well, that all the time. Yeah, continuing education should be key. If you want to stay on top of your industry, if you love your industry and you want to do it, what's best, you would, you would, why wouldn't you want to? You, would, they, you would be surprised. You they, would they be know. surprised. Most people go to education because it's mandated for their license that's all we not to right. go learn. Well, and I agree. Right. And I'm going to say that, Sonia. Yeah, that, and I'm going to say that, Sonia. I think that is probably the biggest issue is that people right. probably think, and I'm, and I can't speak for the governor, but I certainly believe the biggest industry, people just think you're doing hair. They don't that's know it. the science behind what you uh, have had to learn in order to get your salon open. That's and, right. But, but that goes true. back Very to true. we don't understand what or respect what we each of us do as a that's professor. That's right. Yeah, That's I right. want to say hi to Jeffrey Johnson. I'm gonna get to you, Yvonne. Hi to okay. Jeffrey Johnson and uh, to Macy Smith, who are also watching. Jonika Farr, thank you so much. Jeffrey says, and I'm gonna get to your question, Yvonne, and to your statement. Uh, and, and this is a great point. Jeffrey says that the government is not open for business. Why are they using small businesses as testing sites to see if the virus spreads? Uh, it was interesting because in Georgia, as you said, Yvonne, you know they've reopened everything except for the governor's mansion. You can't yeah. go before at the governor's mansion now. Mm -mm. You can go anyplace else you want to go in Georgia, which I thought was interesting. Go ahead, Yvonne. <laughs> <what> you <wanna say. laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, that's something we teach a lot in our classes. So many people just go just to get to check the block because you can't get your license without it. But our industry has gotten where they don't want to educate. We try to educate with finances. We educate with not only just knowing how to deal with clients for epidemics, and they can happen, like they said, but a lot of people don't respect our industry because they think we just stand by a chair and twirl hair all day long right, 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 and right. don't do the science of, because most stylists don't go get education. Most of them just want to twirl. I look at so many people and it's sad who've still been doing hair the entire time, which puts right. us at risk because those who actually have done the right thing, when these people come back at the salons, they've been willy-nilly out there getting their hair done in the house and everything else, which puts our session and the, the professional ones in jeopardy because we don't know what they've been doing, how they've been reacting, who they've been contacting, whereas we have been doing the right thing to ensure our clients are safe. Mm -hmm. Then you got people that are, I mean, every day you can look on the sites, who's doing this today? I got openings for this, which is really hard and really almost disrespectful because we do have the community of us who want to do the right thing that are setting up our salons to be as safe as possible. That's right. That's and you right. have so many people who have just disregarded this whole thing like it's been a big joke. Right. Well, yeah, somebody said, I want to go back up to, there was a comment earlier about a salon on Garner's Ferry Road. Oh, yeah. Sharon Rapley said, Sue's on Garner's Ferry Road in Columbia has been open for two weeks. How is it possible? Well, yeah, it's possible because what no, they've decided, basically what it's happened. I don't know if you guys saw the news this past week where there was a nail salon Yes, that was busted. Okay. So really what is really happening is from what I've observed, and I've been riding around Columbia, yes. just observe. I know who's been sliding in, who's been sliding out. And, and, and the only thing, and the only reason I did it was for my own sake to see how people are faring with us. Right. Now that salon had never, that nail salon never closed. Wow. Never. And I knew it. I knew of it. And the day that it went down, I received a call because the person asked me, to say, well, are you going to call and tell? I was like, no, they're going to get caught. They're going to get caught. Mm -hmm. Somebody called in. So think about it. The, the cops can't go and sheriffs. They, they look, they just want you to use good common sense. Right, right. And right. be careful. They can't go around to everybody. But if they get a call on you, you can best mm -hmm. believe you're going to be in. You can, now, my thing for that is this. If you were bold enough to stay open, mm -hmm. you should be bold enough to lose your license. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, I had if, a, mm -hmm. Lose it. 
Yeah. Go ahead, Sandra. They said here in Charleston. I was going to they... say, I have a neighbor who's a, um, a state trooper, and he caught me outside, and he was asking me how everything was going. And he mentioned the lady that got arrested in Texas. And he says, oh, I feel like that was very harsh. And I said, I don't. He says, mm -hmm. really? No, I feel like it was very harsh that they arrested her and gave her seven days. They should have, you know, just fine. Ooh. I said, honestly, she got off easily because if everybody else is, is closed and staying closed and respecting the law, then this person here, in actuality, she could have lost her license and gotten the $10,000 fine. All right. yeah. And so mm -hmm. you see a lot of discrepancies within this closure that is is also a frustration because you know you want people to be safe you want the industry to be united but we're not and so you have those fragments that right. um you know like you could have i forget what it was called but you could write the commerce and tell them why you're an essential business and find oh, yeah, a yeah, home yeah. and open up your business right Right. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Um, Barbara, yeah. I want to get to you to your comment. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you wanted to say something, but Yvonne, Tasha Nicole mm -hmm. says uh, some people really may have to work to survive. She said it may not mm -hmm. be just total disregard. Well, I, I do oh. understand that. I know it's hard. I understand that. Work, I, 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 I understand that <laughs> yeah. there. And I know it's hard, especially with a lot of people not getting <laughs> what they promised to us. Mm -hmm. I just think some of them do do it for because they have to survive but this should show them right. that okay we no. got to rearrange ourselves that so we can go in where people a week later still couldn't leave the salon at least mm -hmm. be able to survive a month and i know mm -hmm. that's hard to hear and it's hard for everybody you know suffering try to rearrange and do everything but the thing is that if we're going to do this and hit it head on so we can come back so they can say well you know give us some type of guidelines so we can be safe you know, I right. respect those who had to work. You know, I, I feel sorry that you had to. Um, but it's not that, you know, we were told to do this and that. And, and the, the reconscious is that if you lose your license, was it worth it? Right. Because even though you have to work to survive, if you lose yeah. that license for two years, then you have nothing. And you got to re-educate everything you put into this career, mm -hmm. everything we right. put into our passion to do something else and go work for somebody for eight or nine or 10 or 12 dollars an hour where we have a bigger control in this here. Yeah, not only that, Yvonne, if something happens in that salon. You're held liable. You're gonna be held liable. Uh -huh. And that is That's going right. to not only, I think, look, you know, affect your business, but it's gonna affect right. the whole industry because yeah. somebody's gonna say, yeah. I knew they couldn't, you know, I, nobody, everybody's gonna be affected. So, you know? There are so many stylists and business entrepreneurs out here you would be shocked that do not have any form of malpractice insurance. No form of insurance whatsoever. We won't even talk about medical insurance. And I tell people all the time, you have to understand, there's always that person who's going to do the right thing, mm -hmm. but there's always that person that's looking for, how can I turn this around and, and make it benefit me in a bad way? Mm -hmm. And the last thing we need is for somebody to come and say, Oh, well, I was in your salon and you, I got COVID-19 in your salon. That's so, right. and, and so take it. If you don't have the proper insurance set up, they're going to come after your personal stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Want to say hi to Kelly Kell. Thank you so much for watching the beautiful. Also, Mardell Belton. Uh, Barbara, you wanted to make a comment? It was before you said that um, you were talking about the licensing and everything. And I don't see a lot of uh, people violating this to get their beauty licenses removed, but their business licenses with the city of Charleston were threatened. So if yeah, they, if they yeah. caught you and were going to close you down, that's what you would get. That's what you would lose was your business mm -hmm. license, which, right. you know, you can't necessarily do that. So I haven't heard much about, and I haven't heard of too many people, the people that I hang out with anything have all been respecting the law, you know, because that's, is but the best that we can do. And plus, I think most people are kind of nervous. I mean, right. you know, it's like, I don't want to risk anybody, myself included. Or yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Well, it's kind of like, you, it's kind of like Yvonne said, you know, we understand some people got to do what they got to do, but you know, you, it's more than one way to skin a cat. Yes. <laughs> and yes, right. you, you know, we all know there's more than one way to skin a cat, but when you're going to get blatant and just hang the cat out there and skin it <laughs> in front of everybody. Right. You know, I hope that cat. I hope that cat boat keeps you warm. That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Good point, John. Uh, yeah. One recommendation. Um, 
for me, roughly about three weeks ago, I started supplementing my income with uh, sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I invested in hand sanitizer. So within a period of mm, maybe six days, I was able to get rid of over 42 cases of sanitizer, which really put mm -hmm. put me in a situation where I was two months ahead. Mm -hmm. So oh, wow. tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll get another shipment of sanitizer in. This is going to become the norm. Uh-oh. Oh, oh did, did we lose Chris? Did he freeze? Yeah, he, he freeze? There he is. He just froze for a moment. Oh, he's still frozen. All right. Well, we're talking to uh, the frozen Chris Javis, also uh, Sandra Wooden, uh, Yvonne Gaines, and uh, Barbara Brandt Williams, also John T. Elliott. We're talking on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. And of course, we're talking to stylists about the uh, being closed and how they feel. Samantha Klee guys says, do you feel yeah. that you will be in the same financial bracket being that less people will be seen in the salon? What do you think? How do you think is this is going to affect you financially? Uh -huh. Uh, well, I, th I think I think depending on your clientele base and how you schedule and um, re kind of reinvent the wheel a little bit, some people, I, I think it's going to affect all of us financially. Mm -hmm, um, sure. But, you know, you just got to try and maintain best you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to uh, chime in, Barbara? Yes. I think that um, it depends upon how you did business before. A number of years ago, right. I worked for somebody who was a, um, uh, a large salon owner in Charleston, and I ended up learning how to charge properly for my work and not double book. So that's there what I've been doing for a long, long time. I take one person time. at a time, and I take care of them, and I give them my attention, oh. and they get charged ac accordingly. But because of that, I'm not doing two, three, four people at a time. Those people, they're going to they're gonna be suffering because you cannot right. do that anymore. Right. But this is not the time to change your prices. Right. This, is a, right. this is extenuating circumstances, and you can't mm -hmm. just up your price to cover because you were doing it a different way. That's not okay. Give them that COVID-19 price, huh? That COVID-19 <laughs> <laughs> price. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Kind of social media, I've seen it everywhere, and all these people asking them, I'm going, no, 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 no. I mean, like, look, if it was real life and I was – a hairdresser going out to people, you know, to like that, that's three times the amount that I charge, but I'm exactly. not doing that. You don't yeah. do that to people. Like when you, when right. you're in an emergency situation and you right. run up your prices after some, cause that's how you lose a business. You don't yeah. do that. No. Yeah. You don't well, because everybody's yeah. affected, not only the stuff, right. everybody right. is, is being that's impacted. Right. What do you think? But you know what? Oh, go ahead, John. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Yvonne. Well, I mean, that's the thing is that, um, you know, where our clients, that's one thing I, we always say, I make sure I, when people say, oh, you charge so much. No, I charge what I know I'm worth. Yeah. There you what, go. Yeah. Going up is going to be, you know, I only say as I see is that my prices have to stay the same. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be certain things that might shift slightly where, like I said, if you don't come with my mask, I'm going to offer you one, you know, different things they right. have to do. But, right. Right. you know, trying to shift up high, you're going to have people who are like, they just can't afford it. Because other people like us who might not have been working, they're already paying, sitting down, paying $8,500 for a service that they have had to make a sacrifice for. And we can't just jump up $20 yeah. on a service to cover what we have yeah. to do. Like I said, we do have to work smarter, not harder. But this is going to make a lot of people reset themselves, look, get the education, and say, because clients don't mind yeah. paying you when you're giving them what you're worth. They're not going right. to pay for nickel and dime. That's stuff. right. So That's it's just right. a matter of a lot of people, when it's over and done with, those who are really strong are going to stand. And some of them are, like they said, are, are going to fall off. And, you know, it's just hopefully at the end, we're all okay. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, it's like, I would like to add into that, you know, that the, this, for me, I can't speak about, speak for everyone. Mm -hmm. But for me, this has been an hey, eye opener for me. Hey, Chris, you're back. Hey, Chris. <laughs> yeah, but my apologies. This, it's that's okay. Right. It's like this, I had three or four phone calls trying to come through at one time. That's all right. This has been it's such an eye-opening experience for you, me. You, uh, you, but sorry, Giles, that he had some disinfected calls coming in. He, you know, that's right. <laughs> but um, but uh, it gave me a time to sit back and to reflect on how much my clients really mean to me, mm -hmm. and how much I really value them. I had clients, and I know some of you guys probably experienced this, mm -hmm. but let me show you just how blessed um, I think we are. I had clients that mailed me checks. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. for services mm -hmm. for their every two weeks appointment, their mm -hmm. every week appointment. Yeah. That tips me like $30, $50 tips. And I'm going like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And they're going like, no. You know, you've, you've always mm -hmm. been there for me. You've always given me good service. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it, it just comes back that karma. Yeah. How, what you put in, you get yeah. out. That's right. Yeah. And, and we've got to learn not to make this, uh, this COVID thing make us so crazy that when the clients come in, because they're already dealing with stuff. Yes. So it's our job to, to bring them in and make them feel even better than what they did before when they left. That's, that's what I'm working on. Yeah. Just giving them that extra 24 karat gold uh, yeah. customer service. Yeah, that's yeah. good, John. Uh, Laquande Brown says, get with Carla Jones for your pre-screening forms for COVID-19 for your clients and guests. I know someone said, uh, Chris, I think it was you that said you got your temperature checked, your thermometers already ready. Um, what other things are you planning to do? I mean, are you going to get the extra insurance? Are you going to get the pre-screening um, forms like uh, Laquande Brown says? Uh, but I already have implemented. For me, um, oh, I'm, sorry. I'm adding an outside sanitizer before you entry, um, an inside sanitizer before you exit to protect the door. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I removed my mm -hmm. water unit, which we had the, the one that you actually feel. I got all these calls coming in. I should have put this thing on ignore. <laughs> but um, we had a unit that you actually filled your cup by touch. Mm -hmm. Took that out. I actually added a water fountain that had the bottle dispenser on top. I disconnected the, the actual fountain so no one can utilize it by putting their hands on it, mm -hmm. but they can actually take a cup, bring in their own cup or utilize our cup and use the cup, the bottle filler. Um, everything that I'm doing in here is now no touch. Each and every one of the barbers, I've, I've gotten in the KN95 mask. Um, I've already distributed those to them and I'm actually getting another shipment of those in because I'm selling those also. <laughs> um, um, so far as the restroom before entry, there's another sanitizer station there. Everything is automated. Um, nothing is touched. All the sanitizers will be, you just put your hands up under them and they dispense. Our waiting area will only have three chairs and those three chairs will not be for clients. It'll be for parents accompanying children, mm. um, but no waiting area whatsoever. And as I told you before, the barbers will be working in four-hour shifts. Um, I don't know how long the four hours will last. You know, I, I told them, let's just roll with it, make some money right now, but um, you, you won't be broke. Right. Um, and the stylists, they'll be working, like I said, six to eight hours, but trying to see no more than six clients a day. Because so, we don't want to get above that number because you greaten your risk. If you read the CDC report, oh, yes. you don't mm -hmm. want to come in contact with but so many people. Right. Um, so far as our dress, no shorts. Um, and as you all know, we don't do open toe shoes, but I really don't want you wearing anything with your heels out. Um, I've got them where they wear the capes now that come and cover the knee to the knee. Um, no cotton, all silk, uh, all um, anything that hair won't stay on. Um, mm -hmm. It's got to go straight to the floor. Um, everything that we're doing is to not only protect them and the client, but to protect them when they go to their vehicles and then go home. I don't want you getting stuff on your clothes, and then whenever you get home, your child runs up to you, you embrace your child, give them a hug, and now they got this thing out called Kawasaki. Now the children can possibly get sick from a touch of COVID. Right. So, you know, it's a lot of things I'm putting in place. And um, most of it is education, making sure we understand our sedentary rules and regulations. Um, yeah. For the most part, it's things we've been doing. We just want to heighten it. We want to heighten it tremendously. I want everybody to not be afraid, but I want them to be concerned every yeah. time someone comes in the door. Um, nothing is open to the public anymore. We had the coffee stand where it was they could fix their own coffee and things of that nature. I've removed it um, that we will not be able to utilize right now. Um, the only thing that we'll provide is water. So far as snacks, I'm not doing snacks anymore because if mm -hmm. we're allowing somebody to go into uh, something that we have snacks in, you don't know if that person may be sick and they may not have on gloves. So it's just a lot of things that we're going to be eliminating until we see the opportunity to go back to it. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Sanja, mm -hmm. did, did you want to chime in? 
Sandra, did you want to chime in? I don't know if she can hear me. Sandra. 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 Oh, she can't hear. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> We're talking to, uh, well, we, we lost her, I think. Sandra Woodard with Sharper Image. Also, Yvonne Gaines, Robert Brent Williams. She's a stylist in Charleston. John T. Elliott here. Thank you, Pastor Hunter, along with uh, Chris, Davis, uh, Chris Davis. We've been talking about how the salons are going to um, act or, or what, what they're going to do after the governor makes this announcement today and how they feel about the beauty industry going forward. Sandra, are you back? Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So, Sandra, do you want to chime in uh, as we wrap up the conversation? Yes. I was just going to say that I, um, I did get the forms together and I also um, have forms for my staff to fill out. Uh, purchase the mask, uh, pretty much everything Chris is saying that he's done. And even in listening to you guys, I get more ideas on what to do to protect. I think <clears throat> the biggest thing that I would want anybody to know about our industry is that we are prepared to do those sanitary yeah. practices. Yes, and that's that right. we have the training to know how to easily implement it and go forward. And mm -hmm. I think it is important for us to educate the community um mm -hmm. you know that we are ready to take on those responsibilities and have in fact been taking those responsibilities on so my question is as we close this conversation if the governor says today you can open up your salon will you john uh it will not open today <laughs> um like i said I'm, I'm trying to meet with all of my staffing and like you said we've got some things in place but we've all decided that we all want to be out here together at different areas throughout the salon, making sure that we have gone above and beyond with cleaning from top to bottom, which we've been doing all along. But um, that gives you, I think, you know, to let the clients, because you know what's going to happen as soon as the governor says it, phone's going to blow up. Right, like oh, and so, already. Right. So we got to like, hey, hey, whoa, 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 hold hey, on, hold on. Right. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. Because you're, to say. Yeah, because if you had a, a set schedule of clients that come on Tuesday, those clients that have been calling you trying to get in, they don't right, they don't want them people on Tuesday. They want to get in before Tuesday. So I've just got to pace it and, and we'll pull it together. I'm looking forward to um getting back in the salon. I'm looking forward to all of us being blessed again and just uh pressing our way through this through the end of the year. Yeah. But we'll be ready. Yeah. Barbara, what about you? If the governor says today that you can open, will you open this week. Oh well, well, he he's supposed to say. I heard a rumor that it's Friday, oh, so but I don't know again. that to be the truth until we find right. the official well, okie dokie. So before between now and when he does, we're having a meeting with our staff. I just was talking to everybody that's. We all have our individual businesses, and there's only four mm -hmm. of us. But we will have a whole meeting about what we're going to do, make the changes, all that, that's right. all the cleaning top to bottom, all that stuff, which I've already done, but then I'm going to go back in and do more. Plus, um, yes, I will open because, A, I got to service my people because they all want to come in. But I also, you can't, once he opens you, you can't technically stay closed and get unemployment anymore. Mm. And I've been getting unemployment, and so you can't do that. So if, you, if you're trying to claim it and they're telling you you have to go back to work, you got to go back to work and which is fine with me. I'd really rather, you know, I'd like to be there and yeah, be able to yeah. take care of people, but you got to be able to to do that. Now, will I be prepared? Yes, ma'am. I will be prepared. And I'm, yeah. and I'm getting uh, UV light sanitizers. If they never get here in the mail, I'm getting those for the shop. And then um, all the other things that y'all are talking about, all that kind of stuff and uh, making sure it's all done. So we'll, we'll be having a meeting uh, to take care of all that and probably, you know, that's why I was so anxious because I really wanted to open. He said two weeks ago that it would be probably 15 days, which would be tomorrow. Well, that's not going to happen. And so um, I've got people booked all week. So now I got to cancel them and move them around and everything for next week. But yes, we will. We will definitely be ready. What about you, Yvonne? Will your salon open if the governor's announcement today says you guys can open this week? Um, if I'm saying about this week, just to make sure again that we have everything in line to be safe, talk to other girls because we have girls that have, you know, young children at home. Right. So that they feel comfortable. So the thing is that I'm going to make sure I have everything implemented in the salon so that we can go back safely. 
was going to be on how everybody feels. Um, I know, like I said, a lot of clients are going to try to pile in and they're going to have to understand that we can only do one client at a time. That's going to be the biggest fight of who's going to be first this year. I've had 20 people say, I want to be the first one. Everybody can't be the first one. But, <laughs> you know, long as we know everything is safe, like I said, we've been following the guidelines and have everything in play. And then I said, for the clients to understand, too, it's for their safety as well as our safety. Right. So that almost sounds like maybe not this week. Well, I mean, they said this week, but it's still, you know, with everything on backlog on Amazon, a lot of stuff is not even being available Right. Or some so, stuff. Right. so you might not be ready this week. So even though you yeah, yeah. might not, if you don't have everything in, because now I might going to open and I don't have everything in place. No, gotcha. I'm not. Right. if I do have everything in place, there is a possibility, but it's going to have mm -hmm. to be to make sure we have everything that we need and not just, I got to get in the salon. I'm not right. going to do that. I'm not right. going to jeopardize right. my family. <laughs> you know, I have a, a mother with compromised immune system. I'm Stop not going to jeopardize call. the people. I know. <laughs> Find you, you know. stop that call. <laughs> you know what? Me that. trying to stifle it is making it worse. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Look, Girl, I'm afraid to breathe. I'm I afraid to even breathe hard in my salon. It's warm in here, and I'm like, I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. yeah, you know you can't cough anymore. You can't yeah, have no, it. No, no, and I have no, to try to stifle it. Sanja, uh, if, if the governor says today, if his announcement is salons can open up this week, will Sharper Image be open this week? More than likely, yes, because we've been actively preparing. Um, I, like Barbara, had people scheduled for this week in lieu of us supposed to be open tomorrow. So right, I'm probably right. going to have to go back in and reroute again. Wow. But um, hopefully... You know, depends on what he says. Mm -hmm. I'm not forcing anything. My belief system has always been those that feel like they should, should, and those that feel like they shouldn't, you know, wait it out. Um, we're already prepared to stagger out our appointments. That's already been understood. And so for the most part, we are ready. I, the only thing I'm waiting on at this point is the disposable capes. <laughs> okay. All right. What about over at King and Queens, Chris? You you, you mentioned that you've got a lot King going on. You're Queens selling your disinfectant. <laughs> Kings and Queens will be ready to go. The entire staff, everybody's coach. Everybody knows what shift they're working. Everybody knows um, what our process is, as well as um, having everything in place here at the shop. Okay. Like I said, I'm here today just making some final touches. I got to go through this evening and do my deep clean. Mm -hmm. um, and after I do my deep clean, I have the journalist company coming out tomorrow mm -hmm. to do their, uh, what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, please link that to for us also. Yeah. That's it. So, so uh, Chris, if people want more information about King and Queens, give us uh, some information about. Um, we're located in Sand Hills in the marketplace. Um, where Bilo is located at 136-1. I'm sorry, 136-1 Forum Drive. Um, our phone number is 803-419-2816. And you can locate us on the web also, up under Kings and Queens. John, your contact information? Uh, yeah, you can locate me uh, right off of Two Notch Road across from Ace Glass Company. That's 1004 Fontaine Road here in Columbia. Phone number 803-735-0088. And uh, yeah, if we can do anything for anybody out there, give us a call. We we good and clean in here. Good and clean. <laughs> um, and your grooming guru at Artisan Salon, which is 1319 Savannah Highway, Charleston. Uh, we are across the street from the Krispy Kreme, so everybody knows where that is. And uh, and 843-813-1838. Uh, and I'm sure the phone will be burning up. <laughs> good, good. I just want to throw in, uh, Barbara has done, uh, when Barbara worked with me uh, with a uh, presidential candidate best-selling author Marianne Williamson when I was working on her campaign and uh, she would uh, when she was in Charleston she would come over and do her hair so she did an excellent job thank you Barbara You're and Yvonne welcome. thank you I'm um, at Yvonne's House Design uh, 7509 Garden Ferry Road Suite E and our company number is 803-695-5055 and Sanja <laughs> All right, I'm at uh, Sharper Image Hair Design, 736 St. Andrews Road, Suite E. You can reach us at 803-446-2123. We are ready to service 
the southwest area, I believe. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we're clean, as as Mr. Elliot said, yeah. we are clean. <laughs> clean, clean. <laughs> Our final yeah. comment, Cheryl, Cheryl Miller says she's in North Carolina. She's not a stylist, but she says she appreciates hearing all of the points of view on how you're preparing and how you'll handle the client. She says she praised North Carolina Salon for having something like this. Um, like, uh, and she shouts out Miss Yvonne's House of Style. Cheryl, thank you so much for uh, watching and uh, please continue to post and share out this great conversation uh, because these stylists have given some great information, not only uh, educating us about their industry, but letting us know how they are preparing. Also, I would just say to each of you, this is a great time, like we said earlier, for you to come together as a profession and uh, make those changes and become unified so that you can uh, d d go further in your businesses. Each of you have been affected and uh, you know, life is, life is gonna happen. And this yep. thing, this COVID-19, it's probably gonna be COVID-2021, <laughs> you know, so. We're gonna, we're gonna be a little bit more prepared. We're gonna yeah, be a lot more prepared. Right. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Hopefully you'll take this opportunity to come together as an industry. And so you can move your industry forward. Carla Jones says, if anyone's looking for a safe salon, first pre-screening waivers and safety reopen business information. Uh, she's, she has her website there. All forms are compliant and do not require printing. Totally electronic to eliminate germ transfer with paper. Ms. Jones, thank you so much for uh, leaving that link in the uh, in the chat. And uh, anyone needs it, any of you who need it or anybody else, please check that out. I usually leave with a reading from Jesus Calling. Today is May 11th and it says, thank me for all of your problems. This is Jesus talking. As soon as your mind gets snagged on a difficulty, bring it to me with thanksgiving then ask me to show you my way to handle the situation. The very act of thanking me releases your mind from the negative forces. Mm -hmm. As you turn your attention to me, the problem fades in significance and loses the power to trip you up. Together, you and I, Jesus says, we can deal with the situation, either facing it head on or putting it aside for later consideration. Most of the situations that entangle your mind are not today's concerns. You have borrowed them from tomorrow. In this case, mm. I lift the problem out of today and deposit it in the future where it is veiled from your eyes. It's in a place where I give you my peace, which flows freely from my presence. Thank you guys so much for joining me on Coping with COVID. Sandra Wooded, Mrs. Yvonne Gaines, Barbara Brandt, Williams, John T. Elliott, and also Chris mm -hmm. Davis. Good luck to you guys. God bless you, thank you in so your thank you. Uh, companies and in your efforts. And thank you so much for all you've done to serve our community. Tomorrow on Coping with COVID, we're going to talk with Dr. Roslyn Artis, the president of Benedict College. She's also on the governor's task force. She brought up some interesting points last week about broadband and how we should be expanding it in South Carolina. We're going to talk to her about that and also about what the new school year is going to look like at Benedict College and other colleges across the city and the state. We'll also talk to Mayor Steve Benjamin on Wednesday and the city also has a COVID task force in addition to the state. We'll talk to Steve Benjamin about that also. All that and more coming up on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Good luck to you. God bless. Stay safe and be blessed. Thank you so much. Thanks. for watching. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. Bye-bye.